Number 97. Answer the following questions. And then we're at letter F. Right? We're over the hump. We're almost done with this question. So they said that an average balloon has a diameter of 60 feet and a volume of 1.1 times 10 to the fifth feet cubed. What is the lifting power of such a balloon? Okay. So in the last question in letter E, they did kind of briefly describe uh, lifting power. All right. And just know that lifting power is in terms of grams. So they're looking for a gram value here. Now, the thing that we just need from the past, um, from the past uh, question in letter E was in order to get the lifting power, we had to take the density difference between the cool air and the hot air. So that's the number that we're pulling from letter E. So we're going to use this number, right? And we're going to use it as like either a conversion or we could think of it in terms of a density because it is a density, right? But if the lifting power is in grams, right? And here's the gram value. The, it looks like the thing is we just need to get a liter value somehow, right? Now let's see, what did they tell us in the question? Well, they told us we had a diameter of 60. Oh, but they told us we had a volume of 1.1 times 10 to the fifth feet cubed. But in order to use this number, I need to get it in liters. So this is just a funny way of saying, let's go all the way back to chem, you know, the first couple of chapters in chem, actually the first chapter of chem, and let's do conversions because everybody loves conversions, don't you? I know I do. <laughs> totally, totally not. But anyway, all we have to do is just convert, right? So this should be like a refresher. So how do we go from feet cubed to liters cubed? Well, we should know that the, the thing between these is the centimeters cubed. Remember, one centimeter cubed is the same thing as a milliliter. So there's the cubed guy. And then since they're equal to each other, you can go from centimeter cubed to milliliter. And then from a milliliter, I could get to a liter. So basically, if we kind of work a little bit backwards, right, I would have to get a mil, then I can go to liters. And from there, this is the same as centimeters cubed. And now we're in the cubed land, right? But now how do I go from feet to centimeters? Well, I could go from feet to inches first, right? And then from inches cubed, I could go from cent to centimeters cubed, centimeters cubed to milliliters, and then finally to liters. So let's do the conversion over here. Start with what we're given. And maybe I'll put this as 1.1 times 10 to the fifth. And then we'll say feet cubed. So times by that ratio. Put feet on the bottom. And inches is the one that's coming up first, right? Now this is where you have to remember your conversions. Remember, there are 12 inches in one foot. Now, this three means that this conversion we have to do three times because feet and inches are just a single you know, foot and the inch is just an inch. It's not inches cubed. So we have to cube this value to get that the three on there, right? Okay, now the feet cubes are gonna cancel. Let's keep working. We got inches cubed now, times by the ratio. Um, let's just see. What's going on here? There we go. We don't want inches cubed anymore. That goes on the bottom. And remember, the next step is centimeters cubed. So we'll put centimeters cubed up on top, or just centimeters. Once again, we got to remember those numbers, right? And for inches to centimeters, the conversion is one inch, always equals 2.54 centimeters. But the same thing here. This is just, you know, centimeter in, uh, inches. If we need to add that cube in there, I have to put a cube. Now let's keep going. This will cancel out the inches. Now we're at centimeters cubed. We're almost there. Centimeter cube on the bottom. 
and milliliter, right? Now here's the thing. Since we're going from centimeter cube to milliliter, I can put the cubed here because milliliters is not going to get cubed. So I can just leave this cube on the bottom for centimeters cubed and that will cancel the centimeters cubed out. So they're the same number, right? It's one for one, but all you're doing is you're just changing the unit. Whoop, hold on, what happened there? And then finally, the last step is you need to go from mils to liters, right? So mils on the, on the bottom, liter up on top, a thousand mils equals one liter, right? There we go. So this is a great refresher. So let's see. Let's see if I could if I could do this. Let's see. We got twelve cubed times two point five four. That's also cubed. That's going to be times by the first number, the one point one times ten to the fifth. And then it seems like all we have to do is just divide by a thousand. Beautiful. So my volume, my new volume is, uh, I guess we'll cut it off. I guess we'll cut it off after three sig figs. 3.11. I'm going to say 3.115 because technically that's not the answer yet. They still want the lifting power. So 3.115 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And now we're in liters. Lifting power is in grams. I have my volume. Here's my density. So I could just do that density formula, right? Density equals mass divided by volume. In this case, this is what we're solving for. That's the lifting capacity. You have, well, we just solved for the volume, 3.115 times 10 to the 6th. And the density is what we found out in part E, 0.1288 grams per liter. And if you just rearrange this formula, it would just be mass equals the density times the volume. So all you have to do is just multiply those two numbers together. So mass equals the density, 0 0.1288 times 3.115 times 10 to the 6th. And that's our first answer. Maybe I'll just put that down here. It's getting a little crazy. 3.115 times 10 to the sixth times 0.1288. And here I will leave it as, oh, well, actually, we only use two sig figs here. So I think maybe we could get away with two sig figs, but does anybody care? No. 4.0, 4.0 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And there you go. So this would be in grams, and that's your lifting power. And if you want to say that it's, you know, now a, you know, 4 times 10 to the 5th grams, um, actually, yeah, 4 times... 4.0 times 10 to the 5th grams. That's the lifting power of the balloon. Now, the second question. And for everyone who said, what did we have to do with 60 feet? Nothing, right? They gave us a volume. All we had to do was this formula, but we just had to convert the volume. So sometimes they'll give you more information than you need. They're, I feel like they're going to always try to do that, but I know you guys, right? Not going to stop you guys. All right, in this little box, I'm going to put the next part. So they say, if the weight of the balloon and its rigging is 500 pounds, what is the capacity for carrying passengers and cargo? Okie dokie. Now, in this case, the total weight of the balloon is 500 pounds. We want to know what, you know, what is the maximum weight that can be on the balloon in order to still, you know, come off on the ground. So basically we need to know what that weight requirement is. Now this is the total pounds, right? We can't exceed 500 pounds, right? In order to lift off the ground. So the thing is, is that we just want to know how many pounds are left over. 
this lifting power is in grams. But they're telling us that the weight is in pounds. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take that lifting power, 4.0 times 10 to the fifth grams, and I'm going to just quickly convert it into pounds just to get the two units to being the same because you can't do any math with two different mass units. And I gave you the conversion down here. 453.59 grams is just equal to one pound. So let's just go for it. 4.0 times 10 to the fifth grams times by a ratio, right? We'll say we don't want grams anymore, so that goes on the bottom. We want pounds, so that goes up on top. 453.59 grams, 0.59 is equal to one pound. Grams cancel out, and now we just converted that number into pounds. So let's see what it is. It looks like a division to me. Four times 10 to the fifth minus uh, 453.59. Not minus. Christina, what are you doing? Divided by 453.59. I was going to say that number is really weird. Okay. So in this case, we have a lifting power of 880. Huh, I guess we'll say 880 or 882 pounds. Now, the, the weight of the balloon is 500. We can't go over 882 pounds because that's the lifting power. So if the balloon is taking out 500 of these pounds, what is going to be the capacity for, you know, how much weight, you know, all the passengers and all the cargo can go on this balloon, on the little balloon ride, right? Yeah, you got it. It would just be 882. That's the total minus the weight of the actual balloon, which is 500. And that is going to tell us the difference between the two and what is allowed to go on. So if we wanted to round it, roughly about 382 pounds. So a combination of 382 pounds of all the weight of the passengers plus their luggage and their cargo or whatever they're bringing on this balloon ride to have a good time in the sky. And that's it. Hopefully this helped. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Uh, subscribe to the channel and tell your friends, tell your classmates that this cool service exists. I think it's a pretty cool YouTube channel. What do you think? Thank you so much and I will see you guys in later lessons. Bye-bye.